Hey everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak here, Digging Deeper, video number 10, Think Like an Artist. All right, so today we're talking about jazz improvisation, of course, but I want to talk about the topic of how to actually think like an artist, and I mean an artist with a capital A. This is way beyond like playing the right notes, or I hope I'm in time, or I hope I get to the bridge at the right time. I'm talking about thinking like an artist, making decisions that are artistic in nature. It's a huge topic. And now, think about this. Um, you may be in a position like me. I did eight years of college studying this stuff. I've had thousands of lessons, thousands and thousands of lessons. How often have you talked about this idea of making artistic decisions? It's usually so mechanical, right? It's so scientific. It's applying this scale to this chord and this pattern to, you know, it gets into that all the time. But the goal here is to be artistic, right? And here's the other thing. I don't think you need to wait 30 years to make artistic decisions. You don't have to have all the technique. We can name plenty of artists, such as Bob Dylan with, some would say, a substandard voice, or Chet Baker, who wasn't the world's greatest trumpet player. Those people were artists, right? So don't wait to have some sort of perfect technique, and then I'll think about art later. Ah, how about think about it today? That's what we're going to do here. All right, so these videos are sponsored by my friends at Gonzalez Reeds. I've used their Gonzalez saxophone reeds for years and years, and it's, they're very kindly sponsoring these videos. So thank you to them. I'd really encourage you to check out the product. It's awesome. All right, so the, the last thing I'll say before we get started is uh, I really enjoy finding out about you folks. I, I really want to know about you specifically and what you're doing in music. Are you a full-time player? Are you having a blast playing on the side? Are you a music teacher? That's the kind of stuff I want to know. I've had hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and emails thanks to these videos. Uh, you know, people asking for PDFs that are occasionally available for the videos. This one doesn't happen to have one, as it turns out. But I want to learn about what excites you and what motivates you and what you're finding frustrating in the music you're doing. As a teacher, that's what I want to know, right? I want to know where you're getting traction, uh, where you need more help, where you need more support, and specifically what I could do to help you with that. So. Um, and my biggest thing, like really what I'm all about, is trying to create a community of players. Music is about a community, right? A band, a community, a scene, a vibe, right? So that's what I want to create, and that's what these videos are really, you know, here to do. So I want to find out, do you have enough opportunities to play? Are you able to get together with other people at your level and play this music? That's the joy of it, right? Do you have good leadership? Do you have good mentorship? Are you getting good advice in your playing or in your business if you're a professional, right? So that's what I'm all about. I've, I've got some exciting thoughts on this stuff coming up and I'm going to be asking your advice. Uh, so I really honestly do want to hear from you. Send me an email at diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com and we can go from there. Okay, so let's dig into this playing like an artist thing. Um, so in the previous video, number nine, in or out, what we did is took a C Dorian scale and decided, are those notes more inside or outside? And you may say, well, C Dorian, that's kind of an inside scale. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about every note, C and D, the first two notes of C Dorian. Are they the same? Uh, well, some may say, well, they're in the C Dorian scale. It's not what I'm talking about. They're entirely different notes. They function differently. It's like salt and pepper. Are they the same? They're spices. They sit beside each other on the table. They're entirely different, right? So a C and a D, for my money, uh, to be very simplistic about it, which is a good way to think, as far as I'm concerned, C is very consonant. It sounds at home. It sounds at rest. It sounds bland. The D has some energy to it. It sounds like uh, it's saying something. It rubs a little bit. It maybe wants to move. Maybe it's asking a question. Whatever emotions or images you want to put to it is good. So, and then we went up the scale and created a hierarchy of which is the most inside note, which is the mo most outside note, or the most bland note to the most spicy note, okay? So that's what we did in that last uh, video. So I'd really encourage you to check it out. Today, I want to take that information and make art with it, or do something just beyond pushing buttons, or to do something with that intellectual information that makes us think like an artist. Because, 
you know, I, I love the intellectual side of music and the analysis and the patterns and the, you know, all that stuff. That really tickles my brain. But the bottom line is people don't pay me to do math equations on stage. They want to hear me saying something. So how are we going to say something? So here's what I want to do. Um, in that C concert Dorian scale, I play tenor sax, so I'm in the key of D, but I'll talk in the key of C. Um, I'm going to pick two notes. For my money, the most inside note in a C Dorian scale is the root, C. The most challenging note, the spiciest note, for my money, is the sixth or the thirteenth. Same thing, an A in the key of C minor. Here's the thing, you don't have to agree with me. You, you know, just like people perceive colors differently, you may say some other note is spicier than that. Fantastic. I don't care. And by the way, that makes us sound different when we play, right? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick the blandest note and the spiciest note. And those are going to be sort of my point of departure, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on a uh, play-along track that's just cranking out a bunch of C minor. Okay, and what I'm going to do is improvise for a measure, and then in the second measure, I'm going to land on that A, on the more tense note. So I'm going to improvise for a measure. In the second measure, I'm going to land on the A. I'm going to improvise for a third measure. In the fourth measure, I'm going to land on the C. So you're going to hear some improvising, and you're going to hear a tense note. I'm going to improvise. You're going to hear a more relaxed note. Let me just do that a couple times through, and then we can talk about what uh, this kind of means to me. Improvise for a measure, landed on the tense note in the th second measure. Improvise for a third measure, landed on the consonant note. Now, to me, so I made a decision. To me, that's an artistic decision. There was some intellect behind it. I knew what I wanted, but here was my decision. I want to play a couple measures and ask a question. That's what I was thinking. I want to ask a question. I want to say something that is intriguing to you. A, right? That A concert. Then... I want to resolve. I want to end that story. Okay? So I think, I should have looked this up. I think that's called a compound sentence, a sentence that has two parts. There's a comma in the middle. If it's not, you know what I'm talking about. Something, something, comma, and now here's the end of the sentence. So that actually has a little interest to it. It has a little shape to it. And I made an artistic decision. I want to create some tension, and now I choose to resolve it. Let me do that one more time. So, of course, I'm just improvising, and all I'm thinking is, I want tension here, I want a resolution here. And I'll use the same format one more time. like a developmental thing, right? Like a little baby is just making sounds. That's where you and I started with improvising. We were just making sounds on our instruments. There was no organization, there were no words, no phrases, no vocabulary, no harmony, right? At some point, a baby learns five or six words and they make little statements. I'm hungry. That's red, right? Those sort of things, those simple statements. And in our improvising, people get to that point where they can sort of play three or four right notes in the key. Here's three or four more correct notes in the key. After a while, a little kid will learn little phrases, right? And so we'll do the same thing in improvising. Well, so at some point, developmentally, children will start to have uh, these two-part compound sentences, right? They'll say something, they'll create a little mystery and then they'll answer. Dad, I came home and this happened. And then here's what I did about it, right? And so developmentally, that is more interesting, okay? And so that's where we want to get here. So I don't care what you're playing. The stuff that I'm playing in the first and third measure is purely improvised, right? But the idea is I'm choosing tension, then I'm choosing a resolution. So that's a typical 
sentence uh, format where there's a little mystery in the middle and then we resolve it at the end. We could imagine some mystery, some more mystery, and a resolution. Now, if this is a novel, there may be mystery building for 300 pages. There may be a resolution or not. One plot may be resolved, the next one is left hanging, right? That is art. Those are artistic decisions. So you get to make those decisions. And a simple way to do it is choose which note you're going to end on. So I chose, you know, because of what we did in the last video, um, quite a challenging note. So hopefully it strikes your ear that way. And then quite a bland note to, you know, sort of make this point. Um, so let me do this. Let me uh, improvise through a little more freely, not playing necessarily just little two measure phrases and see if you can sort of hear for yourself. Uh, did Jeff create a little tension at the end of that phrase or did that sound more like a resolution? Here's the thing, it's art, it's messy. What, my, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do may hit you a slightly different way. And again, that's what art is. We look at abstract art and 20 people are gonna see 20 different things. Most abstract artists love that, right? But there's also objective things. People can critique music and art. People can say, oh, I hear this here, and a majority of people will hear that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this. So again, I just have this play along playing a bunch of C minor, and when I end phrases, now I'm, I, I may choose other notes, not just the sixth as my tense note or the root. I may uh, choose some other notes. The ninth is a nice tense note that I like. The fifth is a nice relaxed or bland note that I like. So, here we go. playing notes outside the Dorian uh, flavor. I started playing some flat sixes and major sevens and major thirds and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, and my decision is I hear more tension here. And I was trying not to be too intellectual. I was sort of letting my fingers do the walking and saying I hear a ton of tension coming now. What is the most tension you can imagine on a C minor? How about the major third? an E, right? So I did that once or twice. Did it sound good? Did I artistically pull it off? Eh, maybe or maybe not. But I just wanted the most tension possible in that moment. It freaked me out as an artist. And so I was like, ooh, I better pull this back. Uh, and then I came back and I think I finally resolved on the root. Just to let you know I hadn't entirely lost my mind, right? So that was artistic thinking. And most of us, whatever level we're at, if we can play the C Dorian scale, we can start thinking this way. So this is huge. And uh, I've had some fantastic teachers through the years. Um, I never really got a lesson like this, uh, just because there was so much to be practicing and learning and the nuts and bolts and doing it this way. There is no reason we can't start thinking artistically. And the cool thing is this gives us a key into listening to our heroes. Do that, be very black and white. If you've listened to my videos, you know I like this either or. I like setting up simple yes or no scenarios. Um, and you can tell me I'm oversimplifying and I will agree with you. But it sure is valuable and it sure works. Give it a try. So listen to Bill Evans, listen to Joe Henderson, listen to John Schofield or uh, whoever it is. And listen, just, just think, is this a lot of tension? Is this a little tension? That's all you get, black or white, yes or no. Did they end asking a question? Did that feel like a question to me? Or did it feel like a statement where they ended in a final kind of way? 
So that gives you a key. And when you start thinking like that and you're improvising, you'll be actually surprised at how you can pull this off. So thank you so much for tuning in here. We can leave it there. Uh, please subscribe to these videos if you haven't yet. And please share them with your friends. And please get in contact with Digging Deeper Jazz at gmail.com. As I said, I'm going to be asking your advice coming up before too long here on, uh, again, the, the, the things that are working for you in your music. If you had a wish list of what you would have more of uh, to make your experience in music, to make your experience as a professional jazz musician, what do you want more of? Uh, I'd love to hear that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, great talking to you, and we'll see you again soon.